all right so this is the last part of the lecture yes i'm going to explain uh two remaining theories and another um concepts that involving task performance when we attribute uh, someone's success or failure when they when they have to complete certain tasks yeah so emotional ability theory concerns on how human emotion is formed yes yeah, so this, this this is one of the earlier theory that explains why uh, emotion arises yeah and how emotions actually works so um, basically we uh, causal attribution is the basis yeah is the basis of explanation why we feel certain emotion uh, because basically our emotion is the attribution of uh, arousal of our physiological response when we experiencing a stimulus so for example if you feel that your heart pounding your heartbeat pound your heart pounding so fast and then you start to sweat for example then we try to attribute or we try to look for explanation why our body feels our body or, or, or the states of our, our physiological states changes in in such ways and we sometimes use emotion to label yeah to label uh, that uh, our physiological responses so when you see someone who, who you doesn't like very much and you feel that you are pounding very fast then you would see then you would uh, use uh, emotion certain emotion as a label as an explanation why you feel that way yeah, so that's basically how a human emotion works. So this is why our emotion has two different components. The first one would be the physiological responses because we know that certain emotion could be uh, rooted, yeah, could be rooted from our physiological states. So for example, if you feel extremely happy, extremely joyful, for example, then it would also it, it, not on it's not only a, a psychological a psychological state but it also involves your physiological states as well yeah it means that your certain hormones uh, are secreted yeah and then you feel a certain emotion because of those uh, physiological responses and the process of putting a label to that physiological responses involving cognition and that uh, that label comes from the idea of attribution so this is why this is important yeah so the process of attaching emotional label to physiological responses using the same logic as attribution theory yeah so um so this is this is uh, this actually comes from uh the famous experiment that is conducted by skafter and well it's basically uh he looked at uh, a group of participants when the group of participants were injected by adrenaline and some parts of uh, some groups, yeah, some groups of those students, yeah. So the the participants were the students yeah, of a university. Uh, when that group, a certain uh, a part of that group, were informed about the effect of that adrenaline, uh, which means that they have a sense that certain physiological or bodily response would occur after the injection. But as another part of the students, they don't get, they didn't get informed about the physiological states or physiological response after being injected. After being injected with, uh, with the with the adrenaline, and of course it would occur. It would uh, result. Uh, it would result a certain uh, bodily uh, bo uh, response. Yeah, that is changed from from their, uh, from their physiological states. Yeah. Because we know that adrenaline injecting adrenaline makes our heart pounding, and then it makes us sweating as well. Yeah, and then when they are uh, when they were required to assess the context of emotion, so basically those two groups of students, uh, some of it they uh, they were uh, required to sit in a room with a person with an actor, where the actor the first group uh, they we'll see they, they would see an actor who gets angry or or, or showing that they are uh, bad tempered by uh, by ripping the paper and also making uh, angry noises but the rest of the group they are in a they were in a room with someone who acts funnily uh, who acted funnily by making funny noises and also making uh, a funny behavior 
and then the students were asked to assess the context what kind of emotion that occurs in that context and the students yeah the students who were informed about the effect of adrenaline they could assess the situation better so they could produce they could mention the situation better the emotion better uh, so when the, these students uh, see uh, saw a person who gets angry they could easily say that yes i'm angry too yeah because the the, the actor show uh, uh, show a certain sets of behavior that that reflects that they are ang that they were angry uh, but when the students, the, the informed students, see the person who is not who is, who acts who acted finally, then they would uh, correctly assess the the context by saying that well this person was euphoric, yeah. But then the students who were not informed about the effect of adrenaline, they have they have difficulties, yeah. They had difficulties in putting uh, the right emotion in context, which means that. A proper emotion, a proper assessment of uh, of emotional context would require uh, our knowledge about our uh, physiological responses. So we're, we need to be aware, we need to be uh, informed about uh, our physiological states, which means it in, it concludes that our emotion, yeah, or emotion is actually a product of uh, arousal or physiological responses. And also cognition, which means we attribute, we give attribute, we give label to the physiological responses. And the consequences of this theory is that there is a potential to use the theory by uh, redirecting, yeah, redirecting or relabeling certain physiological states, which was initially, which initially uh, negative, we could reattribute this physiological response as positive yeah as a positive emotion so for example if uh, if someone who is get, who is depressed when they feel um, negative arousal or negative changes in their physiological response we could reattribute that response as an as a positive emotion rather than negative emotion so for example if you are anxious when you need to stand uh, stand before a crowd, when you're trying to make a presentation, for example, and when you when you feel that your hand is sweating and you feel that your heart is pounding, then uh, a therapist uh, could uh, could reattribute that physiological response as no, it's not because you are anxious, but it's because the presence of the crowd. So it's not it's nothing to do about you. It's nothing to do about your anxiety, but it happens because, of course, it's because the crowd. It's because the crowd, and in that sense, it could produce. Yeah, it could produce the um, the intensity of. Uh, we could also reduce the anxiety or depression that happens to be uh, that happens to be uh, that happens to a person. Yeah, well, because the idea is that we could reattribute this into a negative into a positive uh, state yeah and this is something that we call misattribution paradigm as we know that people who is depressed yeah they use internal attribution uh, much often than using external attribution so when a depressive person uh, has trouble has trouble to sleep for example or maybe they have a feeling that no one no one likes them or maybe when they uh, when they uh, uh, when they have to uh, face a failure yeah face a failure in their life they tend to attribute the failure to their internal factor rather than situational factor and a therapist could uh, could easily reattribute that attribution so when you are when you when you fail uh, in, in an exam for example or in a certain task then the failure does not happen because of you but it because of our situational factor and it makes us less anxious and less guilty about that failure so that's the idea if it's true then we can do it and we can use it uh, as a powerful tool to cure not cure perhaps but to improve the condition of a person who has mental illness but the problem is that yeah but the problem is that sometimes uh, our environmental cues is not 
readily accepted yeah, as an invading emotion of our in unexplained arousal. And sometimes the arousal or the physical, the physiological state itself is extremely uncomfortable and extremely negative, unpleasant, so that it makes us easily to to attribute these physiological states as ne as a negative emotion rather than positive. So, for example, if you if you feel that your heart is pounding and your hands is wetting, for example. It's extremely unpleasant to to feel that and it's so un unpleasant and it makes us extremely hard to actually misattribute them or reattribute them to the external factor because we tend to easily say that no it's ha it happens because I'm I'm, I'm, being, I'm being anxious it's not because of the crowd it's because I'm anxious yeah so we we're not ready yeah we're not ready to assign environmental cues or environmental situation or situational factor as the cause of our uh, our changes in our physiological response it's not that easy yeah and also this misattribution technique or the technique to uh, the, te the technique that that i just uh, just ex explained previously yeah so basically the therapist could um reattribute yeah or uh, as uh, the therapist could ask the clients to uh, to direct the explanation why they behave in certain ways to the external factor it's basically um, comes from a very weak evidence yeah and it's only restricted in a laboratory setting but when it is conducted when a research conducted in a more natural setting the same effect does not come up yeah so it means that it's it, what appears as a good idea at first uh, we know that it wasn't real, yeah, it wasn't real. And also, um, yeah, so this is the next, uh, the last, uh, the last major theories concerning on how people attributing, how people attribute uh, or looking for explanation about uh, their own behavior or also others' behaviors uh, would be self-perception theory. And this is, this concerns more, more on how some how individuals explain why they behave in certain ways yeah so it concerns more on your own behavior you're trying to explain why you behave these ways and it also corresponds to the idea of self-concept yeah so basically how we uh, how we seek explanation about our own behavior would also affect how we know how how are the knowledge about yourselves and and we sometimes uh, connect or we sometimes correspond uh, the behavior with our own attitude. So, for example, if I like bakso so much, if I eat bakso, for example, then I would say if, if, someone's, if, if, if someone asks me, why do you eat bakso uh, so often right, uh, compared to other, uh, other uh, choices of foods, yeah? Then I would say that, yeah, because I like bakso so much. I'm, I'm a bakso lover and I would... I wouldn't eat any other food rather than baso. Yeah. So you try to explain. Yeah. You try to explain why you behave such ways by seeking for correspondence between your own attitudes or your or your own personality with your behavior. So it concerns more about how we explain our behavior. But we're going to talk about this later. Yeah. When when discussing about self concept. So we're. I'll keep this. Uh, I'll keep this before. Uh, the week nine, a eh, week seven or week eight, yeah. And the last part of this lecture would concern on how we attribute the success or the failure uh, of, of individuals in when they complete when they have to complete certain tasks. So, for example, if you have a if you have a friend who has extra excellent mark or excellent grades, yeah, in 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 uh in 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 an exam, yeah, for example, then. We try to seek or uh, the explanation why the success or why the failure, why they fail, yeah, why they fail uh, in, in an exam, yeah. So we're trying to uh, seek for explanation about someone's performance, yeah, based on three dimensions. And from this three dimension, we could have eight different types of explanation why someone is fail, why someone fails or uh, success in doing a certain task for example in here is exam yeah so the first 
dimension or the first aspect that would like to assess before concluding why someone someone fails or success when they when 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 they're doing an exam is the locus yeah the is the performance or the is the performance uh, of uh, the, is the the student performance caused by more by the actor by the students or the by situation yeah and the second one but the stability is the internal internal or the external cause is something that is stable or unstable yeah so it concerns on the stability of the locus yeah and the third one would be the controllability so whether the outcome of the next tasks yeah would be under the someone's control so this is the matrix that uh, that explains uh, the combination between those three uh, based on those three aspects yeah those three dimensions so for example if you have a friend if you have a friend who has a very good score in their exam yeah you're trying to look for internal and external causes yeah if you prefer to see that uh, these students has a good score because they are smart yeah when they are smart then you would assess whether uh whether the the their their uh, their their um their intelligence or maybe their ability to to uh to perform in certain exam it is something that is stable or unstable yeah so it is the the, the their ability yeah uh, something that is stable or unstable and it depends on the controllability of the task do you think that the task would be would be her control i mean the control would be uh whether whether they are familiar with the types of uh, how the, the exam is delivered yeah if they are familiar with how the exam is delivered and when they are familiar with the with the exam system or the grading system we could say that uh they are uh the, we could say that the future task would be uh would be uh, more control or more controllable rather than uncontrollable but when the exam was the first time yeah was the first time that this student used uh, psyche as an online core uh, as an online exam and you are not familiar at all with the with the system and also with the regulation and also with the grading system and we could we could conclude that those uh, performance or those tasks it is something that is uncontrollable rather than controllable so if we say that if we if we look at uh, the context that the exam is controllable which means that the student is familiar with the system of the of the exam and how the exam is delivered and how the grading system is determined yeah by the by the university and then well if the students uh, gets the high score gets the very good score and we see that this person is uh is very smart yeah we know that he that that this person has the ability to uh, to complete all the answers in the exam and so that is why he got he gets a very good score and of course we see that as a typical e4 this is something that it, that happens every day so if they success if he success in getting high score well it's internal because he is smart and it is stable i mean he gets uh, he gets a high score consistently it means that of course he is smart but then if he gets inconsistent uh, result inconsistent result in previous exam then we could see it's unusual effort because it is not usual <laughs> yeah it is not usual that he is that he fails or he is a success because he gets inconsistent result in the past but when you look for explanation that well he is not that smart he gets he always cheated yeah he always he is always cheated in an exam then if he gets if he fails yeah if he fails or if he success yeah if he success in an exam we could see that as as an effect of being uh, of being helped by someone yeah because his friend help him constantly so that's why he is success he is successful in an exam but when it is unstable yeah sometimes he gets help uh, sometimes he doesn't get help yeah then uh, if someone is success yeah if one is, someone is successful in getting high score 
in an exam, we could see that we could conclude that as a well, well, this is unusual help because we know that this students sometimes he cheated, sometimes he cheated a lot. <laughs> Uh, it means that when he gets a very good score and it is because someone help someone is helping uh, helping them then it could be unusual help it's a part of unusual help but then if it is the first time this student using a uh, psyche yeah, or using the online uh, exam yeah so it makes it quite uncontrollable yeah situation for them uh, uh, to uh, to perform yeah, in an exam because he is unfamiliar with the grading system he is unfamiliar with with the with the exam system then when someone is extremely smart yeah when extremely smart and he is not familiar with the system uh, but he is consistently smart then when he gets a very high score we could say that yes it's it is their ability it is because she, he is extremely smart it's not a typical effort. It's not something that, uh, it's it's not it's not a part of their daily experiences, yeah. But it it's, because it means that he excels so much because in a very unfamiliar situation, it turns out that this person can get a high score as well, yeah. But then when it is unstable, yeah, when it is unstable in an unstable situation, uh, well, sometimes he gets good score, sometimes he doesn't get good score. But in this particular exam, he gets a very high score, which means that you could attribute that ha that that there uh, you can attribute that uh, that's uh, that success by saying, well, it perhaps not because their ability, but perhaps because they have a good mood, then he could answer the uh, answer the questions easily, yeah. But then if you look for an external uh, explanation, you're not seeing. Uh, you're not seeing intelligence or ability as the explanation why someone is successful yeah in an exam but rather than well it's um, well it's not because this person is smart but when someone gets high score in a con in an uncontrollable uh, uncontrollable situation it is because yeah perhaps the questions is just the questions are just too easy to answer and this is why he gets high score yeah, so you attribute to the task difficulty to explain why someone is someone fails or someone success in the, in an exam. But then, if someone, if this person, yeah, uh, well, sometimes they get help. Well, sometimes they get help, and sometimes the situation just does not support them. Um, well, we could say that if he gets a high score. In extremely uncontrollable situation and without percep without any help while they're not actually smart we could say that well you're just lucky <laughs> so it's not because you are smart it's because you're lucky yeah of course because you're lucky it's not because the questions uh, it's not because the questions are uh, is, uh, are just too easy but because you're lucky because well it's unstable sometimes you get high score sometimes you get good score and when it, it is uncontrollable situation then 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 people would attribute those success or failure as just being lucky or unlucky yeah all right so that would be the end of this uh, uh video the end of this lecture so if you have any questions uh, just please do not hesitate to reach me out in any possible ways yeah i would be very happy to answer your questions if you have if you have one uh thank you very much for watching so i hope this would be helpful for you to uh to understand more about the material the course material so thank you very much for watching assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Sudah.